Hi and welcome to our May edition of MPS Today. This is our last segment for the school year for 2009 and it'll be a good one. First off, I want to introduce our guests. We have Lance Ransom, who's automotive technology teacher at Dow High School, and Mike Cahoon, one of his students. I'm Norm Neer, I'm the co-host, and Becky Neer is the other co-host. And the difference between Becky Neer and Norm Neer today is that it's Becky Neer's 29th birthday. <laughs> and uh, so we want to uh, wish her a happy birthday for the segment. I, I, sure she wanted me to tell you that mm -hmm. and you look as good as you did the first, first time, time I, I met you okay yes right. <laughs> um, okay uh, we're gonna start with Lance and, and Lance uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about uh, the program at Dow High School well pretty much I've been underneath the car since I was since I was seven years old um, after high school I went to Muskegon Community College I'm originally from the west side of the state in the White Lake area um, Worked for two years, went to community college for engineering, and then transferred to uh, CMU for my teaching degree. Um, so after that, I got a bachelor's degree and a wife, which was kind of a nice deal. Um, <laughs> after that, I paraproed at uh, the Mount Pleasant Area Technical Center um, for one semester, and then I worked in the field at an independent garage for a period of time, and then I started teaching. So that's kind of some background to start. Um, as far as the program, are we to that point yet? Yeah, yeah okay. tell us about the program. Um, H.H. Dow High School, um, I teach both car care and auto tech one and two. Um, car care is the um, prerequisite um, to auto tech. Uh, it just covers the basics, um, the basics that they learn in, in that class, they can apply in auto tech. Um, auto tech is more of a vocational, a lot more in depth. We cover um, four areas, suspension, steering, brakes, uh, engine performance, and electrical. Um, and that split over a two-year period. We'll do um, breaks and then like electrical for the two for a one-year period, and then they come back for their second year and then they figure or uh, finish the other two segments. So that's kind of how it how it works out. So all the all together, automotive is about um, the two years and then just one semester for car care. Okay. And Mike, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you got interested in a in an automotive technology class. I've I've been working on cars since I was little and buying and selling them and fixing them and so I just figured I'd learn what I was doing underneath the car and so I took car care with Mr. Buckkey, the previous teacher, and then had auto tech one and two with Ransom and So you're uh, a senior now? Yep. Okay. And are you in any other uh, career technical classes uh, or just automotive tech? Just automotive. Okay. All right. Okay, great. Um, how about any competitions? Have you gone to any of the competitions? Uh, I went to Skills, not this year, but the last year. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Um, I did. I did breaks, and it was it was fun. It was a good experience, you know. Get and where was that held? Delta College. Delta College. Yep. Okay. And this is something you go to every year yep. with your students. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what kinds of, or you did breaks, what kinds of, of uh, areas do students specialize they in? They have um, electrical, they have brakes, and then they have what's called uh, master. They also have new vehicle prep, which would be for basically a, a car care student could take new vehicle prep, and that's just the basics. Um, and then obviously brakes is just brakes intensive, electrical. The master is everything. They do um, electrical, brakes, suspension, transmissions. They do the whole everything. Um, so those are kind of the areas. And then they compete at a regional level at Delta, like Mike did. And then if you place at the regional, then you go to state, which is typically held in, uh, in Lansing. Okay. So. Mike, tell us, we, you just arrived at the competition. Tell us everything that happens from the beginning of the time you get there until you're, you're done and go home. What okay. does it look like? You get there, you sign up outside the gym, I think. Mm -hmm. And then you go into the automotive area, I guess, at Delta. And you um, take a, you start with your written test, and then they'll call you out your number, and you go to like one station. You'll come back in, you'll do more in your written test, and then you'll go back out and do another station. And so there's multiple stations you, you know, on the breaks you would do, and then a plus a written test. I've been in that facility at Delta. It's a pretty nice yeah, facility. It's amazing. 
Yeah. And my memory has it that Dow High's done pretty well at these competitions. Yeah, we've we placed. Um, well, I I've, I've only been there two years, but mm -hmm. both years we placed at the state level, both last year and this year. Um, and and I know Mr. Bucky did quite well. Um, and I think Mr. McMillan, Before I know you, he did. Yeah, yep. That. So mm -hmm. that's been a tradition that we're trying to carry on. And um, mm -hmm. the longer I'm teaching, the more I'm learning as well to be a better teacher. So. I hope to continue that every year. So. so I wouldn't have to be afraid to bring my car in for your guys to take care of, it sounds I like. I have some good ones, that's for All sure, right. yeah. That's, that's great, exactly. Yep. Yeah, and what my next question um, kind of has to do with, you know, this, as you know, the state of Michigan has added some new graduation requirements. And I know that in some ways that's bad news, but mm -hmm. I also know that, and maybe you can talk a little bit about the fact that um, they're looking at maybe getting some math credits or mm -hmm. science credits through your program and also yeah. I think you align with Delta College for credits. So yep, absolutely. why don't you talk about how a student could still take your okay. program and have it work out. Okay well a big part of our um, like professional development especially with CTE is there we're in the process of, of integrating academics into CTE because mm -hmm. um, really if you think about it as far as automotive there's a lot of science there's a lot of math Definitely. that can be applied mm -hmm. so um, as teachers, we're, we're working to integrate that into our lessons so that there is some math credit on top of learning something about their trade, like automotive. So um, that has definitely been a big part um, of, of what we're trying to do. Um, as far as college articulation, um, the program that I teach is NATEF certified, which what that is, it's, it's basically recognized by ASC, which is what your, your technician certification. Um, and we are under a curriculum that is uh, known nationally, which is nice because both high school level, if it's NATEF certified, and at the college level, it's the same curriculum. So um, two of our classes, brakes and suspension steering, are um, uh, direct articulation with, right now we're in um, articulation with both Delta and University of Northwestern Ohio. So that's mm -hmm. two less classes a student has to take. Um, and we're, we're basically essentially teaching at a college level because it's all the same curriculum. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so that works out really well, too. But as far as um, academics, um, the, one of the nice things about the NATEF curriculum is that they do put a lot of math and science into the curriculum, so we're kind of all on the same page. So we're just in the process of how that fits as far as, you know, making it work with math credits and so on and so forth. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's definitely having an effect, and hopefully en enrollment will stay up with new requirements, so on and so yes, forth. We'll have to watch that over the next couple of years, but I know sure. as a counselor we're, we're sending transcripts to both of those institutions, so I know that you continue to have students that are yep. going in both directions, mm -hmm. so, so that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, all this doom and gloom in Michigan, automotive yeah. manufacturers, mm -hmm. why should a student still, if this is their passion area, mm -hmm. is there light at the end of the tunnel? Absolutely. Should they look at this area? Yeah, um, we're going to have cars forever. There's always going to be cars, and especially now, um, cars are, are so advanced. Um, there's a lot of computer technology that have, has been in play in cars for, you know, 20 years or more. Um, they're getting more sophisticated, so a lot of people, it, they really don't want to do anything with their cars because it's so advanced that they have to have somebody that's trained to fix their vehicle. So right. um, they're really backyard mechanic, those types, shade tree mechanic, those things are really a thing of the past. I mean, um, the training that is involved in an automotive technician is, is very in-depth. Um, so that makes it more specialized. So I think that also is going to provide um, a technician with um, job you know, security, so on and so forth. Um, and there's two different levels. I know that, you know, with the big three having issues and closing dealerships and things like that, um, there is also the independent garage um, on the other side of that, which yes, is good sir. because although, you know, the economy isn't the best, a lot of people are, are having their vehicles fixed instead of buying new ones. So that means the independent garage or technician mm -hmm. is, is having that security to fix the old ones. So both on the dealership and the independent side, I think I think job security I mm -hmm. think is going to be here to stay. So I think as long as people drive cars, Absolutely. which I don't see that going away, nope. it seems like we're going to be pretty safe yep. in your area. Sure. Um, so Mike, tell me um, maybe a couple of the great things that you've enjoyed while you've been in the automotive program. Um, I just like having all the knowledge. You know, I can I can go home and fix my car and not have to pay a independent garage, <laughs> but yeah. it's the knowledge and uh, probably open lab, get to use all the tools and lifts and work on your own cars and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's just 
good class. But it sounds like you're not necessarily going to make that your career, but maybe kind of your interest on the side. Right. I, th mm -hmm. I think that if I was to make it a career, I wouldn't want to go home and work on my own cars. Mm -hmm. I'd kind of get sick of it. Mm -hmm. So I want it to be more of a, you know, a passion than a, or a hobby. Mm -hmm. than you might be pretty popular in your neighborhood, too, <laughs> once, uh, one <laughs> yeah. once people find out your skill level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that either of you would like to maybe add about the program that our viewers might be interested in, in hearing about? Well, kind of what we were talking about, I think, you know, this class is based for it. If there's somebody that doesn't necessarily want to be a technician um, for a living, which it will provide training for that as well, but um, as we've been talking, you know, if somebody takes a different career path, they're going to have that knowledge that they learn um, in the classes that I teach where they can apply, you know, as a hobby or if they want to save themselves money. Um, mm -hmm. So either way, it's, you know, it's really, it's a good practical um, type, of, type of class to learn, um, both, you know, if they, if they only take the basic car care class um, or if they go on through the vocational section, you know, whether they're going to do it for a living or if they're going to do it just to save themselves some money, it's really a win-win situation. So. Um, there's just a lot of good things about the program and um, as far as the practical aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, another thing too is that a lot, it, it focuses on a type of student as far as um, hands-on learn. A lot of students learn yeah. with their hands instead of, you right. know, out of a book. Right. So it's, it, it, it really encompasses a lot of different um, types of learning especially. Mm -hmm. I try and hit on a lot of the different types and um, being out in the shop and students, you know, just really that's the way that they learn. Um, and in some cases, I know it really helped me get through high school because that was a, the type of learner I was. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's for everybody, I, I think. So, mm -hmm. I agree. And you do too. Anything yeah. else you'd like to add? I don't think so. All right. Well, I know that um, I've talked to many students that have enjoyed being in your program and your classes and regretted not taking it sometime sooner. I appreciate it. So thank you for coming. I know my husband and I would have really enjoyed having that kind of training. We would have saved ourselves a lot of money over the years if we would have yeah. known anything about cars at all. Yeah. And you didn't say that the way I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you? <laughs> no, no, I did not. That was, that was very nice of you. Yeah. yeah. Um, she, got, she ended up with a husband who can't do anything with cars uh, and we would both be retired now if we could because we would have saved that <laughs> all much that money, money we I would see. have saved exactly uh -huh. all right yes. just just knowing if the garage is telling you a lie about what's yeah. wrong or not exactly yeah. you know. absolutely exactly and i know absolutely. as a female you just feel like you're just walking into you know to, even yep. to know someone that you can trust mm -hmm. because if you know nothing you're mm -hmm. you're in really bad shape yep. Which is why my number one thing is pick a mechanic that you trust. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's yeah. number one. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we want to thank the viewers for tuning in uh, to this first segment. And stay tuned because we have a couple teachers from Northeast that are going to talk to us about an interesting CSI science program that's going on at Northeast at this time. Welcome back. In this segment, we're going to be learning about using science to solve crimes. And we have with us today three guests from Northeast Middle School. We have a student, Samantha Smith. She's an eighth grader. And we have two teachers, Christine Brillhart and Beth Christensen. Welcome to the three of you. Thank you. And I'm going to start by asking our teachers to tell us a little bit about yourselves and how long you've been employed with Midland Public Schools and what you teach. Beth, we'll start with you. Okay, uh, this is actually the end of my 10th year teaching with Midland Public Schools, so it's kind of a big milestone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been teaching mostly 7th grade and 8th grade science. I've taught a few math classes here and there, and the last two years primarily 8th grade science. Very great. Um, I taught for Midland um, Public Schools for 13 years, and I'm still very involved over at Northeast. I just don't let it go, and I'm coaching their Science Olympiad team, and, which also has a crime scene unit. So, um, love what we do over there. That's great. 
exactly. So you have a love for science and a love for Northeast. It's yes. a good combination. <laughs> yeah. Um, tell me about the CSI Forensic Unit. I hear the two of you developed it. And can you tell us a little bit about how you came up with the idea and basically how does, how do you, how does it work out with the students? Well, it started about 10 years ago. I was at a conference and there was a lot of um, sessions on using chemistry for crime scene investigation. And there were a lot of um, prepackaged for sale curriculum. And kind of looking at some of those, I kind of honestly thought that we could do better if we could personalize it. So she came to me and <laughs> had this great idea that took what seemed like thousands of hours of our time. We spent a lot of Christmas break at Northeast that year, a lot of weekends in the science labs and optimizing chromatography labs or rewriting the fingerprint labs, that sort of thing, until we felt like that we had a curriculum that we could work with. Um, we had the idea of using our own teachers and staff as the suspects so really? that maybe yeah. Northeast eighth graders would have more of an interest in that, <laughs> of convicting their own teachers or principal. I would guess so. or yeah. principal. We do like that. <laughs> um, and um, that we also had to work twice. We, we finally came up with a good idea for a crime, but we had first had a, a break in in the library and somebody stole the Northeast Bell first year and actually we had the room roped off in the library and um, it was during election time and the office was flooded with calls thinking that there was a real break-in because we <laughs> used real crime scene tape so oh, no. that wasn't working and the students eighth graders thought oh the bell's missing and didn't really hold the library. We have a bell? Right. We yeah. have a bell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so then we, we switched over and we decided uh, okay, here's something that means something to you. Your mm -hmm. high school enrollment forms have been stolen. Mm -hmm. So obviously, if they want to go on to the high school, they need to find whoever stole these forms and make sure that they get them back. So, so that you was had to redo, you did it once, and then you had to redo just, it? Just redo the crime. Okay. Like, what right. was the crime? Yeah. Okay. The suspects and everything were the same. And okay. um, Mrs. Lee makes it very clear in our video that we show the kids that Though she's loyal to her staff, <laughs> they're really the only ones who knew where those mm -hmm. forms were, you know, stored. So uh, she pretty much implicates her whole staff. Yeah. Okay. And then she also goes further on there on the vid mock videotape to say that if we don't find these high school enrollment forms, these eighth graders are going to have to stay here forever. <laughs> and um, I can just see her saying that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all this drama. Ever. We, yeah, we <laughs> slowed it down to dramatize it. So right. just a little more incentive to enjoy the unit and you know mm -hmm. come up with a conclusion. Yeah. And so this is a class project. And um, does it align with state mandates for, for science? This was very important and was asked many times just as we were developing too, we wanted to make sure that we were um, meeting a lot of our standards that we have to do. And what we have found out that this is part of the uh, core uh, foundational standards for inquiry, social impl uh, implications, and reflection. And these are the ones that are embedded throughout all of the high school standards. And so it really reinforces and is sending them off to the high school with really great um, practice on using the scientific method through analysis and evaluation. Um, they're doing indirect and direct observation. Again, these are all terms that are used throughout the standards and just giving them more practice. And the last is really using scientific um, data and reasoning on their own to draw a conclusion. So yes, very much. It sounds like it. And are you involved in the unit now? Um, how is it going this year and kind of when does it start and when does it end? Yeah, the, the beginning of May kind of signals the okay. start of uh, the Forensic Science Unit. And we sort of build up to it all year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's the usual threats. We've got to get this done so we can do forensics at the end. And <laughs> a lot of the students have seen, uh, Christine puts together a showcase, a big showcase that has all the suspects, big, you know, wanted posters of them and the different uh, evidence. And of course, uh, you know, just little hints at what they're going to do during the unit. Mm -hmm. And so students have seen this, sixth grade, seventh grade, sometimes they've even had a teacher of theirs arrested during, <laughs> you know, class. And that so they know, awesome. yeah, that happened to you once. <laughs> yeah, they so. had to sing for our teacher because they had it wrong. 
Okay, <laughs> yeah, the teachers, the teachers don't play fair. If they're yeah. falsely accused, sometimes <laughs> the punishment can be severe. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so they, they look forward to this mm. and know that as an eighth grader, this is, this is something that we get to do. And so it's, it's um, well, I guess you can tell more about the unit, too, oh. the kinds of activities that we do. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. Okay, you're on, Samantha. Oh, great. <laughs> no, but so, like, um, two of the labs that I've done is the chromatography and the um, fingerprint lab. And the fingerprint one was actually interesting because we practiced it out a couple days and had it all down. And then we would go and get our suspect's prints that were on a slide in our evidence kit. And we would put the powder on it and shake, it, shake them off and everything and lift them. And our person didn't actually leave a lot of oil, so we didn't really have any prints. So we had to work off of other things. And it was very interesting. And then the chromatography, um, that was when we took ink samples from the ransom note that they had left us. And we um, put the different types of pens up and we saw which one it was most uh, like when it separated out into all the different colors and that helped us catch the suspect. Great. One thing that the students do learn is that it's never quite as easy as it looks on CSI. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. And that was one it. thing that Samantha's book <laughs> yeah. stuck yeah. out because it's like there's not much of a print here. And, and it really, wasn't our fault, yeah. I swear. Yeah, yeah exactly. Those CSI shows, it, it always works out perfectly, doesn't I it? Know. Yeah. <laughs> and she just had too smart of a criminal. They didn't leave a very good print behind. So I, I think they were wearing gloves. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so tell me about the teams and how you split up the work. Okay, so usually the teams are about three, four, sometimes two people, and we all have to do the pre-lab, and in that we like state who is doing what, who's doing which part of the labs, and who's gonna lift the prints and whatever. And then um, we all do the experiment together, and we can all do observations and everything, and then we all have to complete the post-lab analysis and everything on the back, so okay. that way we've all done the work. As a reporter type, I like to get as much information oh. as I can, Samantha. <laughs> um, but I'm going to ask you because Freedom of Information Act, I have to know. Tell me about th what you've learned so far and give me a hint. Who is the, oh. the perpetrator? Well, we do have a couple of clues. We have some prints and they did leave a couple of good prints behind at the Ooh. scene and everything. So we did get a couple of ink ones that turned out well. But we aren't supposed to comment on ongoing investigations, though so we do have a couple <laughs> primary suspects. Okay, that's good to know. So don't well, worry, we'll catch them yet. All right, okay, well, I'll uh, stay on you about that. I'll oh, be back. Yeah. So, um, tell, tell me, how does this compare to other assignments you do in school? It sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds like you're learning a lot. Is, it, is this the best thing you do all year, or I'm putting you on the spot here? Um, no offense to your other one, <laughs> but I do like this one better. It's a lot more hands-on, and we get to go in the lab a lot. And it's really interesting because we're getting to do things that are new instead of, like, repeating out of the book, the questions, the answers. It's, it's a lot more fun. I exciting class. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, the forensic unit's fun. <laughs> yeah, but okay. it's fun. It sounds like it. So we'll ask your teacher, so ask the teachers here, what do you think is the best thing about this unit? It was always really difficult to come up with uh, an end of the year unit. And actually the first time we started this unit, we did it in February. And after that, every other unit got compared to the forensic yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. And um, this one really, you do need to have a certain amount of maturity to follow and do some of the lab techniques and understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So it is a good cumulative um, mm -hmm. unit with all the science processes in there. I mean, she, you learned how to lift fingerprints. You <laughs> saw the ink separating in chromatography and, um, you know, the shoe size, doing some graph analysis, and even showing them that, you know, the struggles of conflicting information. I mean, where can you get that kind of um, right. learning? You yeah. know, it's not, it may, it may mm -hmm. come up with the answer, and a lot of times they're like, ask us, they're like, I can't tell you. Mm -hmm. It's up to you, you that decide. That's so yeah. annoying. <laughs> 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 when you're frustrated, you're learning, that's mm -hmm. great. Uh-huh, I'm sure. <laughs> and that's part of it, the problem solving skills, the science process mm -hmm. skills. Uh, I keep calling them nine and or eight and three quarter students because they're almost ninth graders. Well, right. now it's getting closer to like five sixth students or something like Aww. that. They are 
they are essentially ninth graders mm -hmm. and we want to send them on from Northeast with as many science lab skills, science processing skills as we can possibly give them. And so all these tools can go with them. And so that's what we as teachers love about this unit is that it just restates the importance of those science process skills. They learn a technique, they practice the technique. You know, they, they problem solve and it's just, you know, a wonderful opportunity to give them more for their toolbox, I guess, to take with them. I have to believe that there are students around the state who go through 12 grades and never have an experience like this. This is a terrific experience. I like it. <laughs> Another amazing part is that with those problem solving skills, they're given an evidence packet of six scraps of data. Mm -hmm. Just a little piece of a glass slide with a fingerprint on it. And they have to pull that together and try to come up with a conclusion. So, um, and not every team is successful in uh, finding their suspect, and that's the high motivation. But mm -hmm. as teachers, we really, most of the unit is grades are done on, you know, doing your pre-lab, actually going through the lab and coming up with a conclusion, right or wrong on this didn't work, this did work. So the actually finding the exact suspect is a really, really small part. I think our ratios have been like 50-50. Yeah. So you're yeah, looking at process. It's all about process. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Of course, the kids are in it to make that arrest. <laughs> yes, right. Right. Exactly. We are. They can't wait to go into that classroom in front of all that teacher students and, you know, mm -hmm. arrest them for this crime. And of course, they're sure that this is the teacher who committed the crime when they walk in mm -hmm. there. Um, I send my students with a little envelope that has guilty or innocent in the envelope. So they hand that to the teacher when they state their arrest warrant, their arrest information, and the teacher opens it in front of them and they get that immediate feedback if they were right or wrong. And like we said before, sometimes the teachers, <laughs> you know, they don't like having their yeah. good names sullied. That's and so right. they will, we've yeah. had students who've had to make announcements mm -hmm. over the PA mm -hmm. with, you know, Clean grave down. apologize, <laughs> no, you know, apologies. Right. Cleaning desks, singing, oh, yeah. uh, whatever, and you know, there's been a little trash talk since the unit began. <laughs> yes, you know, exactly. I know you did it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is their chance to That's kind fun. of pay back. Bragging the, rights too. Yeah. 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 The That's teacher fun. that is the one who caused the crime does know. I mean, you're not surprising them that you didn't hide him in their room, or is there a chance they don't even know they're well, the one? Well, what's interesting is every single one of our teams in our classroom has a different criminal. Okay. So we All right. have That's good. What, probably yeah. 25, 30 mm -hmm. teachers who are participating, and so we have a different evidence kit for each of those teachers. Wow. So wow. I don't even know who my students have. I, I couldn't tell you who Samantha's criminal is because sure? I don't even want to look myself. I don't right. want mm -hmm. to give anyone away. Mm -hmm. And so every team has a different guilty suspect because we don't want one person to solve it and kind of ruin the surprise for everybody else. Mm. So in fact, every one of our teachers is 100% guilty. <laughs> Somewhere along the line. Somewhere along the line. So. We don't like it because then we can't compare results and say, oh, that's it, okay. Ah, so mm -hmm. That's true, they couldn't, you couldn't go to another team and kind of say, oh, so what do you think? Mm -hmm. I but that's trust great. themselves too, mm -hmm. though. I mean, because if you think it's, um, you know, Mrs. Doran, and another team thinks it's Mrs. Doran, you know, do you go back and change your answer? Well, you're looking, look at your data, mm -hmm. and the two of you probably aren't right. One of you is wrong, right. or you both could be wrong. And, yeah. But you won't both be right. So it's very interesting when they look at each other and, no, I know I have her. <laughs> so. That'll be us. Just watch it happen. No. <laughs> the complete <laughs> irony. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, I can tell by Samantha's smile how much she's enjoying this, and I'm sure you're anxious oh, yeah. to find the criminal. And are you, you think you're getting close to solving your crime then in your group? I do think that. We've gone yeah. through quite a few pieces of evidence, and me and one of my group mates have been discussing since the start of the unit, because we made a list of suspects, how much we would enjoy going up to one of the teachers and being like, you're under arrest, because he has a big <laughs> class. Yeah. And we were okay. really looking forward to that, because we could just imagine his face. It would have been so interesting. So it's a he. I got a little <laughs> bit of information. See, he's good. It's on All the right. suspect list. So we have girls and boys. <laughs> okay. All right. Investigating, reporting, good. Yeah. Exactly. Well, congratulations to the two of you for coming up with such an incredible 
science project. I, I wish I would have had something even close to that exciting when I was in school. Well, thank you. Uh, and thank good you. luck to you as you finish the unit. And I'm going to have to find out. I'm going to have to talk okay. to you to see who that <laughs> at the end here. So, okay. But viewers, thank you very much. And stay tuned because we have one more segment where we're going to be talking to Laura Hollenbeck from a program called Bravo. It's a volunteer program. Midland Public Schools offers a proven record of student achievement, safe environment, and good citizenship. Elementary school reading programs include the use of phonics instruction. MPS parents are involved and supportive. Teachers are dedicated and well-trained, creating a system that produces superior results. If you are in the market for a new school, we encourage you to experience the excellence of Midland Public Schools, one of Michigan's premier school districts. And welcome back to our third and final segment today. With us we have Laura Hollenbeck. You'll notice that my co-host took off. Um, seeing it's her birthday, we gave her the last, uh, the last segment off. But Laura is going to talk about the Bravo Volunteer Program that we have in the Midland Public Schools. And uh, it's a great program and uh, we're going to learn a lot about it today. So Laura, tell us about yourself first and, and about your role with the schools. Um, We'll want to know about your salary, of course, <laughs> um, so go ahead. Well, I am the Bravo Project Coordinator. Uh, Bravo stands for Building Relationships and Volunteer Opportunities. And the mission of the Bravo Project is to engage the community in the education of our youth, enriching the lives of both. Now, originally, the Bravo Project was called the Volunteer Program. And we changed the name to Bravo Project because we thought it had a little more punch. Sure but also because we like the idea that building relationships uh, spoke less to filling holes and more to building bridges with the community. Um, and in addition, if you uh, look up the word Bravo in the dictionary, it means well done. And we feel that in order to do the best possible job of educating our youth, we need to use all of the resources that are available in the community, and that includes, uh, you know, the volunteer talent that, that is in our community. Um, and lastly, Bravo is a word that's usually said um, in appreciation. And that's a reminder to us um, to always uh, extend our gratitude and say thank you to the many volunteers that uh, are working in Midland Public Schools and so freely giving of their time and talent. We thought this through. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, when the program got started, how many participants you have, and, and where we are right now with, with things. Well, in uh, 2006, Midland Public Schools put together a task force that was uh, made up of uh, administration, teachers, and community members to address the issues of volunteerism. And I was on that committee. Um, I was excited to be a part of that committee because at the time I was already very involved in uh, volunteerism in the schools. Um, I had uh, become involved with the local PTO when my children were at elementary school. And then when they moved on to middle school, I helped to create and provide the leadership for uh, Central Middle School's Parent Teacher Council, or PTC. And through those experiences, I um, really learned firsthand the importance of having volunteers in, in the schools. And um, I wanted to communicate that to the community, and I didn't need to, or the committee. Uh, the committee already was sold on the need for volunteerism. And uh, although I was able to wear my PTO hat and share that, I was also able to wear my parent hat and um, talk about how important it was for me to know that my children were in a safe and secure environment when working with volunteers in the system. Um, the end result of the committee, and they did a great job of balancing all the issues, was that they decided there should be a formal volunteer program, and I was asked to coordinate those, those efforts. Um, there are four critical issues that I was asked to address. The first being uh, volunteer procedures. I was asked to create volunteer procedures that would ensure this safe and secure environment for our children. And then I was asked to integrate those procedures with our existing volunteer organizations, because as you know, we've had a long history of working with volunteers mm -hmm. at Midland Public Schools. Uh, the third critical issue was to 
um, help Midland Public Schools promote an atmosphere that uh, values and supports our volunteers. And then lastly, um, I needed to help Midland Public Schools identify what our needs were and then work with the community to recruit individuals to help fill those needs. I met you back when you were at Central Middle School. Mm -hmm. Remember when you were working, you were instrumental in that media center project that really oh, uh, yes. turned out very nicely. Um, now we get to the salary part. Um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your position and um, what kind of paycheck you take home for this. Well, I have taken on this project as a volunteer. Um, and at the time I was offered the position, I gave a great deal of uh, thought to the scope of where I wanted the Bravo project to go. And I decided that the project would have the greatest potential if it was an exclusively volunteer-run organization. Um, I have to tell you that my vision is this, this uh, big office full of uh, busy and uh, very involved volunteers who are contributing volunteer service to many areas of Midland Public Schools. Um, including but not exclusively recruiting of other volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that um, it's easier for me to ask for people to step up and volunteer if I'm walking the talk, if I'm a volunteer myself. Yeah. And um, I would like to say that I have two new volunteers that have joined the Bravo program, Bravo Project. Uh, Sally Hoffman will be joining us soon to um, provide the leadership for the 1-800-Volunteer website that we're going to kick off this fall. Okay. And Sally Wasserman will be joining the project to uh, provide the leadership for two new volunteer uh, recruitment projects as well. That's great. Now challenges. There, there mm -hmm. have to be some challenges with uh, volunteer programs. Yes. What are they? Well, uh, the volunteer procedures we're not a, a challenge in terms of developing them, but sort of retrofitting them was difficult um, because as we all know, people are somewhat resistant to change. Mm -hmm. And um, what I was really uh, asking people to do, busy people, mind you, volunteers are busy people, was to become a little bit busier and, and sometimes um, add something uh, to their busy day you know, in, in this case, it was filling out applications and having background checks. Um, and I had to do some convincing. Of, uh, and there was a lot of dialogue. And the, the uh, current volunteers needed to understand what our motive was behind asking them to do that. Um, I think that for the most part, it was very well received once they understood that our motive was um, was to ensure the safety of our, of our students, that we were um, really not trying to impede volunteerism or, or to cast suspicion, but rather just to make sure that our children were safe in the schools. Um, but that was sometimes difficult. That's behind us. We currently have 675 process volunteers. Wow, that's great. That's great. That says a lot about our community. Mm, it, really. does. It, it does, it does. It does. Um, Tell us about next year and the uh, areas. Are, are there some specific areas that you're targeting for volunteerism next year in the school system? Uh, yes, and, and this is uh, what Sally Wasserman is going to help um, with. We um, have selected two pilot programs. Um, up until now, Bravo has uh, been responsible just for promoting what's available. Um, but we're going to help a little bit with promoting, recruiting, training, and placing of volunteers in two different areas. The first being um, volunteers for the media centers, and the second would be um, recruiting and placing of uh, volunteers for Dibbles assessment, which mm -hmm. is a literacy assessment tool that the schools are using. Yeah. Great. Well, as media coordinator, you know I'm really happy yes. about the, the media center part, and, I, and I've seen the, the people at work with Dibbles, and, and that is a very time-consuming process, a great process. but. Um, the, the help will be well received, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, if a com community member is interested in being a volunteer for Midland Public Schools, what do they need to do? Well, we currently acquire most of our um, volunteers through the school buildings um, that they're affiliated with, um, and that continues to be a great way to get involved. 
Um, but if there are individuals that are not affiliated with the school building, they are welcome to uh, contact us directly. Um, the easiest way would be to email us through volunteer at mps.k12.mi.us. And we'll have that on the screen All so right, they'll terrific, be able to see it. Terrific. And um, the other way would be to call me directly. And my telephone number is 989-923-5030. You want that on the uh, Absolutely. On the All right, Give that'll be there too. Yep. Okay, great. Yep. And uh, we welcome input from the community. Like I said, this is going to be a community-run, community project. And um, I know there are a lot of people out there with some ideas right now that uh, might, might be willing to give me a call and, and uh, volunteer their time to help out. Yeah. People will be seeing this show all summer long. This all is right. our last show of the, of the season. And uh, so we hope that this will reach a lot of prospective volunteers and, and you'll get some emails and phone calls between now and next fall. That would be great. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to add before we uh, finish the segment? I would like to tell you about um, our Bravo Project logo. We worked with uh, Carol Lewin's class at Dow High School, her graphic design class, um, which is full of uh, very talented, very creative students. Um, each one of the 30-some students provided us with a, a logo and um, it was a hard decision, but we finally selected one that was provided by Kara Gordon. And it, I think we have it available yep, that we'll you be, can we'll show We'll be looking at it as you talk, and, yes. And um, they did a very nice job for us, and hopefully you'll be seeing a lot more of that logo around town. Okay. Well, that's great. And we just want to say how much we appreciate the time you put in, the effort, and uh, bringing together a lot of great resources uh, what it takes is somebody who can be behind the scenes organizing because the resources are there in our they community are. we know mm -hmm. that but uh, it takes somebody to bring those resources together and, and that's what you've done and we, we want to thank you for that you're welcome and to the viewers we want to thank you for being with us this season this uh, is the end of our 2008-2009 mps today season you'll be watching this show throughout the summer and uh, I was just telling Laura that we hope that with all the times it's going to be shown that that, that uh, email box of hers will fill up with volunteers and we'll get plenty of phone calls of people who just want to be able to do something and, and work with, with and for kids next year. And so thank you for being with us. Uh, before I end, I, I want to talk a little bit about the, the Northeast segment, the second segment we did. And uh, those teachers had forgotten to uh, thank the teachers at Northeast for all they've done, and uh, we want to do that. We want to make sure to mention that because without the teachers, they wouldn't be able to do that forensics unit in the same way that they do it. They're good sports, and uh, as you could see by what Samantha said, uh, they love working with the teachers, being able to tell the teachers that they did it. So um, thank you to the, the teachers at Northeast, and thank you to the viewers. We'll see you next season on MPS Today.